Hi, I recently made a video about how best to charge your electric vehicle battery. The video runs for about 16 minutes and I realize that it's full of technical information and it's a lot to absorb and many people just won't have the time or the patience to do that. So I thought I'd do this abridged version for people that are a bit uh, short of time and it just gets to the duck's guts of what you need to know. So before I get into that, two points to make. The first one is this, I know there's a lot of information out there on the internet and a lot of it is just people's opinion and it's unsupported by hard data or facts. Rest assured that I've researched widely to get this information on battery charging and it's all supported by papers and data that comes from universities like the Battery University and so it's good data and it's good information. That's the first point. The second point is that if I say to you, look, even though the manufacturer of your vehicle says charged at 90% each day, I'm telling you, you only need to charge to 60% each day. I'm not criticizing the manufacturer and I'm not for a moment suggesting that I know their product better than they do. But if you consider their situation, they have to have a one size fits all approach. So they're going to say charge to 90% because they know if you're someone who travels 200 kilometers each day, then you'll get to work okay if you're 90% charged. They also know at the other end of the scale, if you're someone who only tra travels two kilometers each day, well, you'll get to work on 90% charge as well. So no one finishes up broken down on the side of the road and that's a good thing, right? However, for the person doing the shorter distance, they don't really need to charge to 90% and indeed they could get more life out of the battery if they don't charge to 90%. The man manufacturers can't go down all these rabbit holes of talking about different situations that people might drive under. So they're just gonna give the maximum and that's that. And I would do the same thing in their situation. So this video is really for those of us that don't drive long distances like me, I only drive about 14 Ks each day. And this information can help you get much longer life out of your battery by not charging it to the recommended level. So there you are, I've given you a spoiler, that's what it's about. Let me quickly go through the chart with you and explain to you why I'm saying this and then I'll come back quickly and just conclude and, and tell you what uh, my final thoughts are. Okay, so this is the website of the Battery University and I've put the link in the bottom of this video if you want to go there and check it out, there's lots of good information. I'm referring to this report today which is BU808. And there's many charts and tables in here, but there's one specific one that I want to look at closely with you today, and that's this one here. This one really summarizes neatly the impact of charging and discharging on the life of a lithium battery. Now, what they did to create this chart was they took a bunch of lithium ion batteries and they subjected them to various charging and discharging sequences. So they held the maximum state of charge at a specific value and they held the de depth of discharge also at another value and they ran the tests at 20 degrees celsius and controlled the temperature and then they cycled the batteries through thousands of charging and discharging cycles and recorded the loss of capacity in the battery over the cycles so on this left hand axis we've got the capacity retention and it's expressed as a percentage of a new battery which is 100 percent obviously and down on the bottom axis we've got the number of cycles that the battery has run through. Now, just on capacity retention, you might say, oh, look, you know what? I'm happy if I've got 80% left in my battery after 10 years, and that's fine. But in the industry, the common standard is 90% is what's accepted as a battery that's still serviceable. Once it gets below 90%, it's deemed end of life. So to make things a little easier today, I'm just gonna put a red line through that 90% level. And that's where we'll focus our attention. Okay, so if we look at the first line, the black line here, we can see it crosses the red line at around a thousand cycles. So if you were cycling the battery every day, that's about three years worth of life you'll get out of that battery. And if we look over in the legend, we can see what they did with that battery to get that result. So they were charging the battery to 100% each cycle and then discharging it down to 25%. And that's the result they got. If we move up here and we look at the green line, we can see the green line crosses the red line just a bit after 2000 cycles. So in this case, they've managed to extend the battery life to double what it was on the black line. So what did they change? Well, on the green line, they left the state of discharge at 25%, no change there. However, they peaked 
the maximum state of charge at 85%. So they reduced the maximum state of charge 15% from where it was on the black line. And just by doing that, they've managed to get double the life out of the battery. So they've moved it from three years to six years, which is pretty good. But then why stop there? If we move up to the purple line, we can see that this line crosses the red line somewhere around four and a half thousand cycles. So here we're looking at a battery with a life expectancy of 12 years. And what did they do to get, reach that? Well, down here you can see that they set the maximum state of charge to 75% and the maximum state of discharge to 45%. So here they're only using about 30% of the energy in the battery. But by doing that, they've extended the life of the battery to 12 years. Now the last line to look at would be this orange line here. And you can see that this one hasn't even crossed the red line yet. But if we were to extrapolate this, we'd imagine it would cross the line somewhere north of eight and a half thousand cycles. So what we're looking at here is a battery with 23 years of life. How did they achieve that? Well, down the bottom here, you can see that they kept the maximum state of charge at 75% and the maximum depth of discharge at 65%. So we're really playing in a very narrow band here where they're only using 10% of the energy in the battery each cycle. And by doing that, they've radically extended the life. Of course, I know you're going to say, well, isn't that a waste of a battery? I mean, you've got this battery with enormous capacity and you're only using 10% of it. Well, that would be right. But then it turns out that most people in developed countries drive less than 20 kilometers each day or 30, 13 miles each day when they commute. This uh, information comes from many studies that have been done across many nations and it's fairly consistent across all of them. So if those people are traveling just 20 kilometers or 13 miles in a day and then getting home and plugging the car back in, they're literally only using 10% or less of the energy in the battery and topping it up 10%. So the only difference between those people and this orange line is that those people are probably charging the car back up to 85 or maybe even 90%. And they're doing that because that's what they were instructed to do by the manufacturer. However, if they lowered that maximum state of charge down to 75%, or I would argue even lower than that, they would get more life out of the battery. Now, I stress again that I'm not criticizing the manufacturers or questioning their knowledge of their own product, but I remind you that they have to give a one size fits all direction to people who buy the product. And so they're allowing for the person who drives maybe, you know, 200 or 400 kilometers in a day. And they know that if they charge to 90%, they'll make that distance. And they also know that someone who drives less than that will make their distance. So there's no one going to be left high and dry. But if you're someone who only drives a short distance, then you could charge to a lower state of charge and get more life out of the battery. The only disappointing thing about this chart is that they didn't run a test going from say 60% maximum state of charge down to 50% because it seems that the closer you get to the Goldilocks state of a lithium ion battery, which is around 50% state of charge, the less stress you're putting on the battery and the longer the life that you'll get out of it. So I expect if they had to run these tests um, going from 60% down to 50%, they probably would have got a line that's even flatter than this orange one. Okay, so there you have it. I think it's fairly obvious from this information that for lithium ion batteries, there's a sweet spot around about 50% state of charge where there's the least amount of stress being put on the cells and that's going to give you the longest life for the battery. So if you're someone who ch only travels a short distance each day, you're much better off just taking out that 10% of the battery energy that you need and then topping it back up to maybe 60%. And the next day, repeat the same thing. If you wanted to, you could probably take it down to 40% and then recharge every two days back to 60%. But basically you wanna stay as close as you can to that kind of 50% state of charge and that will give you the longest life you can possibly get out of your battery. So I hope this information has been useful to you and if it has please give me the thumbs up and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care.